If you have back or neck pain, people of course go to Google and then you'll see lots of adverts from physiotherapists and chiropractors. I'm not going to talk about chiropractors, it's a discredited profession. The fact that there are no NHS chiropractors is evidence of that. But I'd like to highlight a major flaw in how people are treated for muscular and skeletal aches and pains, with the end result being that conditions are slow to respond or may return. To fix a muscular or skeletal pain, you need someone with expertise, a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist, or a surgeon perhaps, some kind of intervention, and time. Take a physiotherapist, they generally charge around £65 per session during which time your condition is evaluated, diagnosed and a course of action set out. Physiotherapist technical knowledge is excellent and the work done by NHS physios is outstanding, treating all manner of conditions. The thing is though, NHS physios want to fix you as soon as possible and get you off their overcrowded register. When it comes to private physios, often called sports physios, if they fix you, they lose you as a client. The business model is fundamentally flawed, which means that the patient can never really recover effectively. A large part of the time, when someone walks into a sports physios, it will be understood that nothing can be done that will remedy your condition during the actual session, which may last perhaps an hour. If you were to walk out of the session without the physio doing anything, then you'll feel that you've wasted your money, what's the point? Therefore, an industry has been born that invents various treatments to make you feel that you've had valuable intervention that will help you recover. Things like massage, acupuncture, stretching, TENS, ultrasound, manual manipulation. They don't work, they've never worked. Um, and there's lots of scientific evidence to say such. The thing is, intervention ultimately must come from you. Manual manipulation doesn't work. Take, for example, electrical stimulation of a muscle, also called TENS. No adaptations occur. The process isn't understood, but the brain has to send the signal for changes to happen. So a practitioner manually manipulating you or stretching you or putting an electronic patch on you isn't going to benefit you at all. It has to come from you. All of these treatments are known by scientific research to be ineffective. They've been researched extensively under proper scientific rigour, they don't do anything. If someone was to state that they received benefit from, say, acupuncture, then you'd need to have a look at other variables that may have been introduced at the same time commencing the treatment, such as changing exercise habits, are they walking longer to work or is there a different ergonomic desk setup? Change of mattress, diet, alcohol intake, smoking, medication, type of shoes you wear, etc. If one of these variables has changed, then it's impossible to say that the massage or acupuncture or whatever have been the reason for the change in pain. When variables are reduced as best as possible, as under scientific rigor, then the aforementioned treatments always come up short. Okay, obvious statement alert. To state the obvious, the body has natural healing capacities. The younger you are, the more growth hormone you have, thus greater regenerative capacity. When people inquire about a treatment for a condition, it's often well understood that there will be a certain amount of time, no matter what you do, the issue won't be fixed until that time. A common example is a hamstring injury. Muscle tears are broadly graded in order of severity, so broadly, Grade one is a mild muscle pull or a strain. Grade two, a partial muscle tear. Grade three, a complete muscle tear. So grade one, you might recover in a few days or a week. Grade two could be several weeks. Grade three, several months, depending on the severity. But this will be the case no matter what you do. Another example is frozen shoulder. In stage one or the freezing phase, this could be from between two to nine months. Uh, pain increases, function decreases. Stage two or the frozen phase is when the pain and function plateau and this lasts around four to 12 months. Stage three is the thawing phase when pain and function returns to how it was prior to the frozen shoulder onset. This last phase, the, the thawing phase, it takes about six months but it can take several years. The point is, although you can lessen the symptoms with exercises and perhaps corticosteroids and painkillers, the process has to run its course regardless. The body has to go through this healing process. Therefore, you need to be doing what you can on a frequent basis. 
little by little, nudging along the body's natural healing processes, allowing the body to do what it's designed to do. If you intervene too forcefully, for example, you know that exercise is good to assist with muscle pain, but you exercise too intensely, then of course you're gonna do more harm than good and end up worse off than before. Small, frequent interventions are required. Unfortunately, this is where private physio's business model is fundamentally flawed. If what is required is three or four very light exercise sessions per week that might only last perhaps 10 minutes, do you really want to pay someone 65 pounds just to watch you do it? The expertise is required in the first session. After this, a personal trainer can carry out the instructions as directed by the exercise physiologist. Often, if you have to pay a high price for each required session, then the result is that you don't do it or you don't do it frequently enough to allow you to recover quickly and effectively. At BPM, we have qualified personal trainers who know your condition and course of action and will guide you as directed by the exercise physiologist. Therefore, you only need to be diagnosed correctly by the exercise physiologist, set on the right track and then guided with little but frequent interventions, that is exercise days that don't cost 65 pounds per time. Once you're healed, hopefully you'll have the incentive to make sure the issue doesn't reoccur. Therefore, either maintain your exercise routine at our gym or follow our programs at a gym that's closer to you or exercise at home. It's all good. So you get the same level of expertise, but you don't have to be paying for sessions that might only last 10 minutes if that's what's required. So I'm guessing that if you're suffering pain from a muscular or skeletal condition, the question needs to be asked, why? Is it because the NHS with all their obvious expertise are simply overcrowded and you can't get seen frequently enough? Or similarly, private physios with similar expertise simply have a fundamentally flawed business model that you don't want to pay exorbitant prices for frequent visits. Either way, if you're suffering, then I'm saying that you might not necessarily have to.